Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So this was interesting from Charts BTC Bitcoin Yearly Candles. We don't usually look at Bitcoin on the yearly, but since Bitcoin's only been around for just over a decade, I thought this was interesting to take a look at. This starts in 2011. We can see three green candlesticks moving throughout 2011, 2012, 2013, before we saw a Bitcoin correction in 2014. But look at how this pattern continues. Another three bullish green candlesticks before another red candlestick in 2018. We can see down here in 2018, we were down 73% in Bitcoin. And uh, if I just go back here, 2014 down 56%. But take a look at where the pattern is going next, 2019, 2020, now we're in 2021. And so if we were to take this as the macro outlook for Bitcoin, we could only assume that this is going to be the most bullish year in the last three years for Bitcoin before we see a downtrend in 2022. Three green candlesticks, red candlestick, three green candlesticks, red candlestick, three green candlesticks, and the last of the green candlesticks in all these trends, the largest candlestick. In 2013, it was up 5,400%. In 2017, up 1,300%. So how much are we going to see this one go up? And is this pattern going to continue to trend in the same direction? Right now, I've got Bitcoin trading at about $57,000. So not too much uh, on the charts here really to talk about. We are still trading on low volume here. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm expecting this to do another double bounce, maybe coming down in around here in and around $53,000, $54,000, even if Bitcoin came down in and around here, which would be $51,000, $52,000 per BTC, I would not be surprised. That would be an old level of resistance. Uh, and so if we bounced off that, shot up to the upside, I would not be surprised about that. Of course, XRP and other altcoins are reflecting the same kind of sentiment, not too much movement. I've got XRP up here right now, trading just under 98 cents, um, but on low volume, so not too much movement in the crypto space. Not too many people are uh, really excited about buying cryptocurrencies at this moment in time. We haven't really broken out one way or the other. We've seen low volume since the summer. Uh, we had this uptick, but since then, guys, we have just been trading sideways, really, for XRP, for Bitcoin, and for many other cryptocurrencies. I mean, there have been some that have uh, just kind of shot up like a rocket, but by and large, the crypto space has just been settling down before that next pump up. Uh, I wanted to bring you guys this, Anders L, a prominent member of the XRP community, and he has an impersonator. So just wanted you guys to know about this, be mindful. Uh, this is the impersonation account, Anders L here, X double underscore Anderson, or Andarson with an A, that is the fake account. Uh, if you go back here, you can see Anders L's real account is uh, spelt with an E. With over 64,000 followers, that's the real account. So he's just putting this out here. I would really appreciate if you reported that account, guys. I will link this tweet in the description. We really have to nip this in the bud. Too many scams going on. And uh, I mean, I'm trying to keep up with my comment section. That is a task in itself day after day. Gonna keep moving though, guys. DJ Peter Vass pointed this out. It's going to be very obvious that every bank needs to become a crypto bank. This is coming from Nathan McCauley, co-founder and CEO of Anchorage Digital. So that company is a digital asset platform that provides crypto custody, trading and staking for financial institutions. Uh, and he said he expects to see more banks providing crypto related services in the coming years. In January, Anchorage Digital Bank became the first federally chartered bank for digital assets. Here's a quote from Macaulay. I think by the end of 2022, it's going to be very obvious that every bank needs to become a crypto bank because enough will have adopted cryptocurrency. Your local bank branch, whether it's a credit union or a large conglomerate bank, will very likely be offering some sort of crypto investment product. Uh, according to Macaulay, such offerings will be driven by increased retail demand. So we are going to see the masses uh, continue to jump on board. This is what is being predicted throughout 2022. And that'll be regulatory clarity coming from Washington and from the states. It's gonna be more obvious that banks are allowed to do that, Macaulay said. And as long as they put in the right controls, work with the right partners, they'll be able to build services of that nature. He also talks a little bit about Web 3.0 down here. The demand for those kinds of coins comes from buy side investors who have a particular thesis on how Web 3.0 will grow, Macaulay said. Web 3.0 refers to the next stage of internet evolution. Broadly, the way we think about Web 3.0 now is that it's going to be some kind of infinite game where an infinite amount of advancement in technology happens across a broad range of different industries, and we're just seeing the very beginning of that. 
So moving into the future, of course, Web 3.0, uh, a broader part of this story that, uh, you know, for some, it is still very difficult to conceptualize because we are in the midst of it right now with NFTs and DeFi, all those things being built uh, with distributed ledger technology, uh, blockchain technology really coming into its own. 2021, a very important year for cryptocurrency, but he's saying 2022 is going to be even more interesting with regards to adoption. So is this trend going to continue? I mean, just going back to the Bitcoin yearly candlesticks, or are we going to see Bitcoin flourish and make more moves to the upside? Again, we have to remember that prolonged bull run, right? Institutional money flowing into Bitcoin, that could uh, definitely have an effect on this. Anyway, an interesting perspective here. Wanted to thank DJ Peter Vass for posting that. Uh, also wanted to mention this, guys, from the Cryptic Poet here, US-based remittance firm Uniteller teams up with Ripple partner Tranglo to expand in 13 APAC markets. So Uniteller, an international remittance payments processor based in the US, has extended its remittance services to more customers in the Asia Pacific region by partnering with Malaysian cross-border payment specialist Tranglo. We know Ripple and Tranglo did recently form a partnership. The partnership with Tranglo will allow Uniteller to further expand its services in 13 Asia Pacific markets, including Bangladesh, India, Indonesia, and Nepal. This will also add more than 58,000 cash pickup points, more than 100, more than 1,100 account bank deposits, and nine e-wallet platforms to its existing payment network. So expanding out that region of the world, Uniteller, uh, from my understanding, not uh, a huge company, but that partnership with Tranglo, who is indeed Ripple enabled, is going to be very big for them and uh, likely a very important move strategically business-wise for that company. And as we all know, or maybe some of us do not know, uh, this again from back in March 2021, Ripple did acquire a 40% stake in Tranglo. So uh, this article just highlighting uh, that Tranglo RippleNet partnership. So Tranglo partnering with Uniteller, secondary and tertiary partnerships, moving RippleNet forward into the future of payments. Great news here. Wanted to thank the Cryptic Poet for posting that. Here's another one, guys, from Bank XRP payment company PayPorter and Ripple have now also formed a new strategic partnership. Here's a, here's just a video advertisement that they created, uh, PayPorter new strategic partner announcement with Ripple. And from my understanding, these guys are not a uh, not that big of a company. If you look up here, they only have 77 followers. Andrew Zell posted 22 followers, that was 11 hours ago. And Brendan asking, why does 22 followers matter? People don't follow banks, they use them. Andrew says it's just an indication of the size of the bank that they are partnering with. So here's an example. Payporter, not a huge financial institution. However, they have decided to partner with Ripple. Part of the appeal of Ripple from the beginning was to be able to democratize payments so that the smaller banks could essentially compete with the bigger banks. And now we are seeing that. We are seeing more of these partnerships, you know, small to medium sized businesses partner up with Ripple because they realize there is so much opportunity to be had here. Years ago, I talked about this concept of uh, first tier banks allowing second and third tier banks to access their Nostro and Vostro accounts in order to help facilitate those smaller banks, help them facilitate cross-border payments. Brad Garlinghouse also mentioned, you know, that this would allow these smaller banks to be able to facilitate their own cross-border payments if they were theoretically in the future were to use XRP to source that liquidity. Well, that was a few years ago now. That was way before we even had XRP as liquidity. Fast forward to today and into the future, right? 2022, the liquidity hub, Ripple is now realizing their vision. And so way more of these banks are going to be able to compete because they do not now need the Nostro and Vostro uh, money. They do not need access to that to help facilitate these payments for their clients. So another example here, Payporter, what looks to be a smaller bank, now in a strategic partnership with Ripple. And now they're going to be able to compete with the big guys. And so uh, T. Holbetic also just highlighting this, Pay Porter and their business partnerships include not only Ripple guys, but Tranglo as well. The company that Ripple owns 40% of. Uh, Quick Point is another one, Fatura Matic, Insha Ventures, and uh, this bank here. Adding to that list is RIA, uh, Intel Express Worldwide Money Transfers, GCC Remit, Private Money, and Shift. So some of their business partners here and uh, just some highlighted articles here from Pay Porter themselves recently joined with QuickPoint as of uh, last week or two weeks ago now. 
So you can see these banks becoming more and more competitive. Uh, you know, down here as per Crypto Eddy, Pay Porter started to send money to Ethiopia, Somalia, Sudan, Kenya, Nigeria, and Pakistan by paying only $3. The new strategic partner with Ripple, and so that is just uh, some more information there coming out of the Pay Porter camp. Wanted to thank T Hole Bedic XRP and Bank XRP for posting those. Uh, also wanted to mention this now. This is a statement from just yesterday. The departing thoughts of Governor Randall Quarles, and so he uh, posted this. This is from the FederalReserve.gov website itself. Here's a screen grab. Digital assets, I'm not gonna read it all for you guys, but I will uh, link the link in the description if you wanna read the full thing. I just kinda wanna go over some of the highlighted points here. Finally, before turning to some longer term issues, I would like to discuss digital assets, which the bank agencies have all said will be an area of significant focus in the coming year. So the coming year, of course, 2022, the number 22, well, do I have to say it, a very important number surrounding uh, not only crypto adoption, but Ripple in particular. I recently did a video about that. I'll link it up here if you guys are interested in something fun. The Federal Reserve and our fellow regulators should welcome responsible innovation, and we should create a regulatory environment that not only allows for such innovation, but encourages it. They talk about some of the tech, digital assets such as stable coins are just an area of welcome innovation. It is clear that there is a strong demand for these assets among bank customers uh, and well-regulated banks should be allowed to engage in activities regarding these assets. We do have some legitimate concerns that must be addressed by any provider of these assets. The structure of the asset must be stable, no fractional reserve, no liquidity mismatch, uh, limited currency volatility. The consumer must be protected, clear legal claims on asset pools. The criminal activity must be deterred, transparent to law enforcement. Of course, all the regulatory concerns that you would expect government to uh, address. But once these concerns are addressed and many of the companies active in this area are eager and able to address them, we should let the ingenious and inventive private sector move rapidly. So boom, that is a key to all this. The private sector needs to be welcomed into the mix. Um, this just continues going on talking about uh, being a bank and what, what constitutes being a bank in the crypto era. I'm just going to skip to the bottom here, guys. While digital asset related activities may be novel, regulators need to treat these activities differently simply because of the nature of the technology. We must focus with care on the unique risks posed by these activities and avoid unnecessarily impeding their promise. For that reason, I am hopeful that regulators will show reason constraint in the regulation of digital assets. So the departing thoughts by Randall Quarles, of course, digital assets um, are the future. 2022 is going to be a big year. And um, are we going to see a bull run continue into 2022? 2020 and 2021 have both been very good for cryptocurrency, um, not only adoption, but cryptocurrency price appreciation. But 2022, this is where we're going to see the most adoption. So is this what we're going to see? Are we going to see more companies jump on board, more money flowing into crypto uh, because of the interest? And more importantly, in the United States, is it going to happen fast and furiously? Is it going to happen slowly but surely? And how is the market really going to react to this? Uh, is the spec market just going to do what it's going to do, right? Cycles in and out. Um, or are we going to see something different? Well, I thought it was interesting. Shane Ellis here posted this years ago. We were told this was a conspiracy theory by those who still don't understand that blockchain and Bitcoin was created and released by government and big banks, not some anonymous guy named Satoshi. Crypto will be successful and XRP will be the number one crypto. Retweeting a Cryptotainment's tweet here, his words, not mine, tagging the Federal Reserve. Guys, this is Jerome Powell. And listen to this clip, listen to what he has to say. It's a short one, 18 seconds long. Listen to this. The partnership will support our analysis of digital currencies, including central bank digital currencies. Help to improve our current payment system with a particular focus on making cross-border payments faster and less expensive and it will provide new tools to aid our supervision of the financial system. Boom goes the dynamite. Sounds like the United States is on board. And I want to point this out specifically, Jerome Powell stating that facilitating cross-border payments effectively, efficiently, cost-efficiently as well. These are all mandates of the Federal Reserve on top of, uh, you know, doing more research regarding a USD CBDC issued by the central bank. So coming straight from Jerome Powell, cross-border payments, of course, part of this story. 
And need I say more? I mean, I gotta bring this up once again. Valente joins the Federal Reserve's pilot program for FedNow Instant Payments, guys. This happened at the beginning of this year. So FedNow is the instant payment solution for the Federal Reserve. Our company is among the select group of financial institution payment processors and technology companies that will begin to work in an instant payment service with the United States run by the Federal Reserve, the U.S. Central Bank. This, if you guys are paying attention, is coming from Valente. And we know, guys, Valente, the Volpe Ripple Processor Module, speeds integration to the Ripple Global Settlement Network. This is just a two-page document. Ripple is the distributed ledger-based global real-time settlement mechanism. Notice how they say the as opposed to a. Uh, it offers banks a faster and more cost-effective mechanism to make international payments in any fiat currency with associated settlement. Again, Valente's Volpe integrated with FedNow, the instant payment service for the United States run by the Federal Reserve. We have Jerome Powell stating cross-border payments going to be a focus on top of uh, some things regarding CBDCs as well. Just back to this real quick, uh, this older PDF, you can see down here, guys, Ripple obviously at the center of this, and I will link this in the description for those of you guys interested. So what are we gonna see for price? What are we gonna see for Bitcoin XRP? Well, Rob Art brought up another good point here, guys. Yet another reason for XRP to reach the seven to $13 range. And just a little bit of quick math here. In 2017, Bitcoin hit $20,000. There's 4,762 times more XRP than there is Bitcoin. Divide that, you get $4.20 minus 9%, which would bring you to about $3.80. That was the top we had for XRP back in late, uh, well, it was actually early 2018 after the altcoins rallied. This equation takes XRP to $13 this time around. But not only that, guys, that is if we were to take the top of Bitcoin being $69,000, which it still might go above. This is the XRP chart, but if I bring Bitcoin up here real quick, the high here that we recently saw, $69,000. Rob Art stating if we take that same equation, 69,000 divided by 4,762 minus 9%, we get in and around that top being around $13, give or take, bringing us to the top, completing the full Fibonacci cycle up at the 4.236. So do you have any doubt, guys? I mean, right now, we're not seeing much movement, but I'm guessing quarter one of 2022 is really where we're gonna see altcoins thrive. And maybe, just maybe, Bitcoin is going to reach its peak by the end of 2021. That's just a thought in my opinion, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.